All right. So let's continue this beat. We're in Studio One Six, working on an R and B track. This is the workflow. We putting it together. Hope you enjoyed the first version or part one of the this series, I guess. So this is what we got so far. So I'm looking to insert some vocals. We'll be using splice. And I kind of like this one. So we're just gonna wait to that download. Dad and drag it in real quick. So let's bring that down. Yeah, let's pitch it. six works So, if we go back up six, but that's, okay, that would be positive six, but I don't know, it didn't really sound like. I didn't go far enough. I Okay. I thought I went like, <laughs> I just didn't go. I don't know. Do I like that? Okay, that's better. Yeah, uh, I think the sound, the sound engine sounds a lot of be a lot better. So.
the goal here is to add ear candy if you will or some type of flavor to the song and the concept is to add filters or maybe even chop it up because I want it to be felt and not necessarily heard. Have you heard that before? I'm also going to send it to Reverb. saying the second time around this okay she's saying the same exact thing all right i didn't even check to see what else She was that little run right there. That was pretty cool. So I'm gonna add that somewhere in there. We're gonna chop it and make it fit somewhere. So let's do this. Well, the volume is already kind of low on that one, so let's go. One cool thing about Studio One is that you like when you place your cursor anywhere, it, it doesn't act like Ableton, right? Ableton gives you that, like if you go to the edge or even just click on a clip, it will start from the beginning of that clip and play from there. If you don't set Studio One to do something similar to that, you will have to always come up here to the top and do the start wherever from, from that point. You can also have macros where you can scrub through the um, the song this way. Also, if you have compatible controllers, like the complete control, for instance, is what, is what I like to use, or even the, the devices that personas released like the fader port or the the other one that i have i can't remember i just recently removed it off my desk i can't remember what the thing is called but you have options to scrub with those devices right and it could be some other devices you have but if you don't want to do that you can always like i said you can click up here to go to wherever that is but there's another option here you just have to go to here. Make sure you're on the editing tab. You're in advanced. 
editing and then click locate when you click in empty space and basically this will start wherever you you, you place your, your deal, right? I don't really care for that feature, so I'm going to take that. I'm going to undo that process. I mean, I feel like Ableton does it best when I just rather go like this, back and forth. There's this other thing that I like to do where if I'm focused in one area, it's this little marker here or this locator or whatever whatever start like it starts at that point it's like an anchor point and you could turn it on and off through i believe it's yeah so you go to transport options enable play start marker and that's what that is so if i uncheck that it takes it off i have a a key designated for that so if if you can see it comes on and off i don't know if you just pay attention to this little area at the start of my loop you'll notice that i'm i'm turning it on and off so i'm moving my cursor away you can see right so wherever i place it it's gonna always start right there or if i wanted to come right here i just press my button again and press it again so so it's a toggle feature you know turn on and turn off right so if, if you're looking for that feature that will be the like i said it'll be the enable place start marker so let's say if we search for play start play start yeah, it would be this here. And this is the, the key on my keyboard that I set to deal with that feature. And you could do the same, right? So that's just one of those things. I just kind of rather work like that. And so if I am wanting to work from this point, all I have to do is, like I say, hit that button again, boom. I don't have to go up here and do anything, you know what I mean? All right, so I think right here is where I want to start working. So basically all I did was I could have used Melodyne, right? Melodyne is a it's a company made by Salamoni, right? They have tight integration with Studio One and probably some other dolls or whatever, but they they kind of always had a tight integration with Studio One. I could have did I could have went that route, but why this is something simple. You know, I could just quickly and also I saved a macro or key commands to my keyboard to gain access to the transpose option. If you don't have that set up, you can always right click and transpose and do your thing. But I figure this is something I'm constantly doing. I'm changing pitches or whatnot. And it just be as simple as that. So what I often do is go to each section and if I feel like there's a pitch that I want to adjust, it's kind of like a, a a cheat sheet, you know, like my quick and easy way of, of dealing with samples, you know, in in this type of scenario. So that, that's what I'm doing right there. And as you can see, this one is um, plus seven and this one is plus five. You know, 
That's how I'm able to get that done real quick. And so on my keyboard, what I'm doing is I'm just, I have it dedicated to a couple of buttons and I'm just going up and down, boom, 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 you know, to each sample until I get the desired result. That's all. <laughs> Alright, so this one I'll push out to the reverb as well. Probably can like fade in like right there. Now this section right here is unique. I do want to adjust this. It kind of sounds like she's blending. I don't know. I put that there by mistake and I like what I hear. So I'm just going to fine tune it. So I'm thinking like, like uh, quickly change my tool, cut there, and then adjust the pitch. Uh, maybe not. You know. So in in this scenario, I can also just add these real quick. All you know, add them all to a a pack folder, if you will. That's what we what we just did. A pack folder is a folder, but it's also a smart folder. So right now it's in a folder and it's doing nothing until I tell it or route it somewhere. And it, it's also true for the other side, like the, like the, let me get rid of some of these, these items here. So we can get a a bigger real estate. So okay, let's label it. So we're gonna say Lebok, right? You don't see it anywhere in here. Select it. Yeah, you, know, you don't see it at all. But once I open the folder. You will see it, and it's down here. These are the, the vocals we just added, but the folder is invisible until you say, hey, let's add a bus. Now, you you pretty much made it smart now. So now at this point, you can add plugins on top of this to affect the entire deal. So... I like what I did with the Pro EQ, so I'm gonna add this to that. And it's just as simple as dragging and dropping. I, man, it's like stuff like that, I feel like it's just, just crazy. I'm gonna just deactivate this for now. Because if I don't like what I did, I, I always have that there. So anytime you drag over a plugin from anywhere, it's it's like it automatically in a smart way it copies and it pastes it. It's not like moving it from one to the next. I believe with a series of buttons you press down, that's probably possible, but I never had a reason to do that. I always kind of liked the idea of it leaving its footprint behind, you know, and I'll just mute this 
just so this track in particular won't be duplicated you know i'm you know i'm not duplicating the the shaping here so let's see what it sounds like Also, I'm going to take this and move that over in it. Same process. This is the reverb that's associated with the track that is buzzed to. I, I already have a reverb track here at the end or towards the end, which is right here. That's what that represents. And that plugin just popped up because it's associated. But again, we're going to deactivate that, deactivate this one as well. And now when we close the folder, we can see it being registered in the mixer area because it's, you route it somewhere. Turn it up just a little bit. So what I was trying to do with this one track, I don't like it. So let's mute it. Okay. All right. I'm going to copy this in to the beginning, but I may not want to do that. But because of that tail end, you know, I'm just thinking... Like, not too bad actually that's probably what I would rather do so like coming out of here yeah that's cool so let's focus on this area Let's see if we can adjust the pitch shift on this one. I believe this is the base. Go ahead and save this again. Yes, we want that. Put that in there. This is our pitch. I believe. Or not. No, it's not. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought that was the pitch. The pitch situations. But it's not. So, let me take a second look around. Because I thought it was right there. I could have sworn, I could have sworn the, the pitching was in this area. I, I, I want to say I did this before. I did this several times, but I don't know. It's like I forgot that quick. But anyway, we're not going to focus too much on that because that will take up most of the time. Man, I was looking for that early and I just, I don't know, I'm... That is interesting. Anyway, the, the concept right there was to pitch shift down the bass to kind of give it a like a roll off type type deal. And I'm still over here looking for it. <laughs> it's just natural with me. Like I would I would not stop looking for something like I I need to pit, be able to pitch shift. Um, and, and if I make adjustments to this here, that would be just playing with the overall pitch of the track. And that's not what I'm, I ain't about that. I ain't about that life. Anyway, I'll figure it out one of these days. I guess that because right now it's only doing two semitones. You know, 
It's only doing two, two semi. I I need at least twelve. Twelve full full notes, full scale. Not semitones. Give me give me give me twelve notes, bro. So I can properly do my thing. Anyway, it's all good. I didn't record that, but again, I like to brag on the fact that retro perspective got my back. Because I just wrote that off and I think I like that placement. We're going to keep that for now. And we're going to verify that by coming in here and seeing what we did. If I can zoom in, I see what I did. I can also clean it up like that. This is my process. This is what I usually do. I'll come in and grab like any nodes in between and just delete it bam it's just it's just an easy way to implement that dish right here just bring it forward boom this is straight straight slope smooth let's see right something like that section I'm gonna just dial back okay so I don't know if you guys remember us creating a pattern in this case for the section we're gonna convert this to a a part because we want to make a change and because it's eight bars long it's difficult to reconvert it back over or to change the resolution to make it fit what we're, tr what we're trying to do here at the end so we're just going to switch it to two parts I don't even know if you guys understand what i just said don't worry about it just let that roll past you don't even, don't even worry i'm i'm fixing it i'm fixing the issue let's go back to piano roll i kind of like that view better i think i said that before let me come out of here Oh, I need to make that adjustment, and it's in this section. That's that's what's going on. So we're going to take away that. Yeah. We like that. We like that. Deactivate that anchored deal. They should just rename it Anchor, Anchor Point. You know, I think that's a better name. Instead of Play Start Marker, Play Start Marker, just say Anchor, Anchor Marker. Because everything is anchored around that point once you act, activate it or enable it. I don't know. That's just me. Let's add a little bit more flavor to this thing here. Let's see what happens.
I'm going to move it down. And I like to mix on the fly. That's another thing I like to do. So we can turn that way down. That was way too loud. that to the reverb I think I'm okay with that and for this instrument I think I wanted to add a little bit more By the way, you can combine instruments. I'm sure you guys know that. You can do that in any doll, I think. I know in Ableton Live. Okay, I did say replace. What's going on? Okay, it's thinking. I know in Ableton Live and then Bitwig, you can do that with their devices. You just have to set it up. You have to grab a device that supports that. I think Bitwig is like... What is it called? Instrument rack? Something something to that extent. And then you just drag whatever whatever instrument you have and get to work. Get to rolling. Okay. So I was thinking like something like glaze maybe and we could probably narrow our search down if we go to something like uh, not vocal but like uh, let's see like a 
synth pad, maybe? Like something warm. Okay, so I'm I'm a I'm gonna use Studio One's feature to to grab the the chords, the progression. So we're gonna access the chord line, and first, what I'm gonna do here is this. So I'm gonna solo it. Just so I decrease the level of embarrassment or distortion as it come through. Because I'm going to show you guys something and it's going to be like, what are you doing? So, here we go. Let's start here. Mm -mm. Right. So all I did was place the rhythm of the chords in the proper areas because what we're going to do now is we're going to find the bass line first, actually. That's, that's what we're going to do. So here's the bass right here. Actually, let's start renaming things because it just makes it, makes it easy to find stuff. I also change the color so we can identify it quicker. Okay. So, I'm going to quantize this real quick. We're going to right click on the bass. And you could do this on wave. You could do it on chord progression or whatever. And the concept here is to grab the, the notes so it can, you know, it's supposed to detect the notes. Detect the key. Okay. Extract the chord track. That's what I want you to do. So, that's not what I was really looking for, but it. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can work with that. So, I was looking for it to change up in different sections because I got these different notes like. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, so it's okay. Anyway, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna tell this thing to follow the chords. So let's start with parallel. So right. So it's not doing what I what I wanted to do. Voodoo. Uh -uh. Wait, is that the same? Add it. I have you added. Okay, let's see what this one sounds like. Okay. That's that was pretty good actually. In terms of the note. So we're gonna Let's do this. So sometimes I'll do this as well. When when making adjustments to notes instead of guessing the work, our okay. So we making adjustments to our. Let's relabel label that. We're gonna call that a uh, pad, right? Pad. Just so we can identify it better. 
the naming convention was something else I did in another project. So, okay, we're making edits to pads, but we want to follow the base. So we're going to open up the base so we can see it in terms of like the placement. And I don't see it. Where is the base? Could be because we're Oh, of course, I have the wrong baseline selected. So let's differentiate this here. This base is what? What is it doing? It's not doing anything. This is the one I want. Okay, we can delete that. I already had a base in there. All right, so back to it. We'll come back in here. And now for this base. Right? All right. So now we're going to increase this. Come back to the edge of this. And we need to identify where the base is. Okay. Do, do, do. So my base, it's hard to see the notes though, but and that's probably why. So I don't want to edit this. So I'm going to take the edit off. I'm going to click the pencil icon here. You can't, <laughs> it's there. You can't really see it, but it's there like in the back how about this let's make a little adjustment to how we see things so the arrangement I say uh, I don't want to do that maybe Let's see how does that look. Okay, you should be able to see a little bit better like that. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Got to go in and hit save. Of course. So let's do that again. Something, something like that. Let's hit apply. Okay, and this is just so you guys can see what's going on. All right, so if I back up a little bit more, say like right here, and let's put that anchor point there. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong, the wrong spot. We needed this part. Okay. right do, do, do. so it's all about the placement so with these notes right here um, so let's see our base our base starts right here boo do, do, do. so I'm gonna move that right there let's see what it sounds like let's extend it a little bit more like a little like a little delay okay this is how I'll be doing things guys maybe 
too early. Uh, maybe like right there. Let's see. Yeah, we'll fix it. It's like the attack is slow on it. All right, so let's fix these other notes. So now I'm gonna I'm I'm find the key to these other ones because the reason why the the chord deal spelled it out like that, you know, the length, because it recognized those notes in the B flat minor family, like all up and down that area. So it just did that. I feel like if I had some other chords somewhere else, then it would have did a lot better with detecting what chords are in what location, but it's going off of just the baseline. So we had to manually do what we need to do right there. So. So I know that that's a. Uh, that's probably a D flat. Yeah, so let's insert that. Let's do that man. Oh, gosh. We're going to do that manually. Okay, I see what you want to do. All right, all right. You can also grab the cut tool and do that. I'm going to double click here and we're going to find D. Flat. No, D flat. That's what we want. Let's see. And I think you can also, as long as this is open on here, you can find the, the that's the easiest way, actually. Right? So I just pretty much laid the chords. I try to match what, what I feel like needs to go in the area like the chord progression and it found it for me so that means it's, it's correcting that note or that chord so all i'm gonna do here is copy those because it's doing the same thing uh i don't want to delete that Oh gosh, it still did it anyway. That was a F. That was a F with an A in the base. So say F and an A in the base, right? That's what it was. There's another core right here. It didn't sound too bad. Okay, that's not too bad. So if I come here, let's say narrow, let's see what happens. Okay, um, I don't know how. 
uh, like that but let's go with the base option Let's deal with this. D. The, there is a delay on here. Oh. The other problem is the halftime is on because I did that with the previous instrument and I forgot that that was on there. But still, there is a delay change some things so a B flat maybe we can just change it let's say maybe maybe like that change notes I wish there was a like invert button maybe maybe there is a macro for that like invert the notes Maybe right right here. Just keep it at F minor. And change the, the bass. Say um I don't know. D flat. this one let's take this back to wait we um did we take everything back i don't remember if we did that oh we stayed in base that's what it <laughs> that's part of the problem we definitely had to invert that um let's push that back let's go invert that
All right, let's pick another sound. That sound is aggravating me. But you're starting to see the point. I mean, if you work with these things, you can get a handle on it. I don't really work with the cord, but it's cool that it's there. You know what I'm saying? For those of you that wanted to know how to work it, there you go. <laughs> so I'm doing the best I can to show you the ropes. Indeed. So... Slow attack. So yeah, so that's that's how this works. If you if you could like I say, if you continue working with this thing, you know, this is just strictly like music theory right here. Um and you can just click on different things to see what it sounds like, like, you know, like for instance, if I'm working in this section. something I kind of play with and, and figure out see what what sounds best but I'm gonna mute it for now because the concept is to just create something that's a little bit warm in that section in the background it's not gonna be in the forefront it's just gonna be kind of hugging that area or not you know the beat is probably already done but I'm just showing you how studio one works and the workflow and of course we're going to take these and duplicate it and you see how easy that was to just do that you know just come here and say verse two so coming out of that I 
was thinking like cut no I'm gonna do this I'm gonna just cut this area actually I don't think I need to do that I just drag this over no it's not gonna work like that maybe because I am okay it wants to override or go in between. Like, see, it can go in between or override it. That's not what I wanted to do. So, what I will do is cut this area in half and let's see how it acts. Uh, if we take this area, yeah, so now it, it does it for me. Okay. So. <laughs> There we go. Let's go to the area where we add the crash. How about that? Okay, so we're in the hook area. Get rid of that browser right there. Right? And here's my crash. I'm gonna just add that there. And then quickly quantize it. Did I quantize it? Yeah. Okay, so I do want to adjust. Now, for right now, I'm not going to worry. Well, maybe I should. These are both mono. One, two, three, four, five. So this is probably stereo five, maybe. I don't know. I can either adjust the volume in the mixer or adjust the volume from the actual sample, which I'll just do that from the mixer. Why not? Whatever. Okay, well, I thought that was the crash. Maybe not. It is definitely not the crash. Because the crash. Which is interesting. Hang on a second. Yeah, it's coming out of five. Oh, you know, 
<laughs> yeah. Stereo 5. Oh, it's coming out of mono. It shouldn't be out of mono. Oh, okay. It wants to live right there. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. Yeah, that sounds good. I actually going to put a filter on it. Filter. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of of this. There is a lot more to Studio One than I am telling you guys, but just the years of working in, in Studio One, I mean, I have courses, of course, so you can definitely learn the ins and outs. There is definitely more information in those courses than I mentioned here on YouTube, but yeah, it's definitely a workflow. I like the workflow. It's just sometimes... I be looking for other things like creative and I feel like personas is getting there, but it's just not there yet. Like with more effects, more note effects, things that we can do like our pageators updating that, of course, different presets for a quarter or if they going to remain calling it that maybe change the name. Yeah. I would like a name change. Yeah. Me. Um, yeah, stuff like that. But Studio One is powerful, and I, if I could say this, I feel like you need you need Sphere. I'm I'm not trying to sell it, but you need Sphere in order to gain access to a lot of a lot of the the samples and stuff like that that they have to offer. If you don't, if you're new, yeah, you need to, I, I would, I would recommend grabbing Sphere because it, it comes loaded, yo. It comes loaded with stuff. So essentially Studio One is all you need is kind of where I'm, where I'm going with that. It's all you need if you have that Sphere package. If you want to know more about the Sphere deal, then just reach out to me because it's a subscription model <laughs> and this video will be super long if I was to, to, to break that down. So, or you can just look it up. If you find some information on it, great. If you understand it, I've, I've done videos on it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So again, lifestyle covered by art, beat coach. We out of here.